So this is another case, uh, female intoxicated, rollover car accident, uh, requiring extrication. She had the uh, left mid shaft ulnar fracture and uh, definitely she came in, paramedics brought her to all spine precautions. She was in a neck color. She had left shoulder pain, severe neck pain, neurologically intact. Now, first thing with a trauma activation like this, number one thing to do is to check out ABCs. The trauma team will come in, make sure that she doesn't have a, her vitals are okay, she's breathing okay, she doesn't have a, a internal uh, bleed requiring an X slap or something like that. So when that checks out, you continue with your survey, you get a CT or an X-ray first, usually get a CT scan of the cervical spine and you look at it and it doesn't look normal. See C1, C2 is okay, upper cervical spine is okay, subaxial spine, you can see here what we call a compression deformity. Looks deformed, but we don't, you know, but we need to look further to see what kind of a injury is this. So you can say, well, I see a compression deformity. Wanna study this further, you got a CT, and it shows, you can see here, fractures of the vertebral body and also of the posterior elements. So it's fractured through and through. Call this a teardrop fracture or a burst fracture. Okay, and then you maintain this patient. It looks unstable, but you know, we talk about three things. Neurologically, she's intact. The morphology looks burst, and she has also posterior element uh, fractures of the posterior elements, which means the spinous processes, sets, lamina, pedicles, that, that's what constitutes the posterior elements. So these are fractured. And you can see here, this is a stir image. Uh, so there's a T2 and that's a stir image. A lot of disruption of the ligaments. See, you have the um, supraspinous ligaments disrupted, interspinous ligament disrupted, and then you can see this ligamentum flavum is disrupted. So this is what we call a three column injury and it's highly unstable. What does that mean? She's intact. You put her in neck collar and you mobilize her it will sublux, she'll get an abrupt neurological injury, maybe a neurological catastrophe, quadriplegia. And we've seen that in some patients, not that we treated that, you know, they were transferred to us. So, so you can, you see, um, so that's why it's important to assign uh, or find out, assign an instability score or find out how unstable the fracture is. And this is totally unstable. And by the book, then you see a burst fracture of the cervical spine that's unstable. Now we see here, you check the vessels too, there is no dissection. Sometimes with these injuries, you get a disruption of the intima of the blood vessels and you can get a stroke, vertebral artery stroke, and that was not the case. So always check for that. So that's an MRA, magnetic resonance angiography of the neck. And I'm sure you know what this is. That's the, these are the verts and then vert, uh, basal artery, and then you have the circle of Willis. So that all looked intact. And these are, that's the classification system that we use. You know, burst fracture, you give it two points. Ligamentous disruption, you give it two points. Um, actually, this one uh, was more than that. Uh, I, would, I would give it four points. It's more than a burst because it involved three columns of the, of the, uh, of the spine, not, not only just the two columns. So the injury score here is at least five. So that's unstable. These are the disco ligamentous components that we look for. Uh, interspinous ligament, supraspinous ligament here, facet capsular ligaments, PLL, disc, ALL. And well, this is treated with a 360, corpectum in the front, and then uh, uh, screws in the back, lateral mass screws, and then pedicle screws to stabilize her spine. And then she followed up, she did really well. everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.